Sí, así parece. Well, people call it Royal Massacre. It actually was a very respectful, ritualized mass assassination. And they put deposits of, of skeletons, well, they put the bodies, but with, in beautiful regalia, which we found all of, into these uh, sacred systems. Um, they were painted red, which we found uh, when we first got here. Here's, here's the entrance to just one, one part of this spectacular palace, but this is the throne room, and this is the entrance that only high elites came through. And they would walk through, there's a stairway up and down, I'll show you. They would walk through this to cleanse themselves, and then up into the palace. Only the high honchos getting through here, and then in the inner courtyard, and then only the super high honchos getting to the next courtyard. So finally only other kings could visit the, the king, or members of his royal family. Well, this is where, in the last day of this occupation, when the invaders came in and killed everybody, and the site, but that was it. It was never reoccupied again at all uh, until this day when we moved in here. And you can see, ah, well, it's cooler right here. You can see we've, but we've, because we were excavating, we, we blocked off the spring. So this is normally filled to the top with crystal clear water and they placed the bodies, it was painted red, the, the royal palace, you can't see it, the jungle's so thick, but it's right there. Um, and they put 31, 32 uh, bodies, men, women, children, two fetuses uh, in here, uh, who, but they were killed with great respect and ritual and tons of good things. And the head of the forensic foundation, the people that dig up the war crime massacres, Jose Suaz Navar, is somebody who got his degree with me in one of my other projects 15 years ago. He's now world famous, won all these awards as they dig up the, the bodies and try to identify them and create evidence for the War Crimes Commission and the Hague and all that. But uh, I convinced him to come down here with his team to investigate uh, a war crime from 1,200 years ago. And they were happy to do that because uh, they didn't they didn't have death threats or women weeping on the sides of their excavations. But you see here where the steps go down and then up the other side. And this was filled to the top with this beautiful water. And uh, there's a spring that comes in and feeds it over there in the corner. There's little holes where it comes in. And then they could go through the water, come out, and they would be ready to go into the royal palace, which is where we'll head. This is part of the ecotourism program that is run by the, uh, the Kekchi communities. And again, we don't do it. They have the guide service. Very few people come here except in Holy Week, but still, it's a lot of money for them. Uh, they have a price. Local kids and all, it's free. Uh, and they give the tours in, in Spanish or Kachikel Maya, and there's about 40 of these that actually explain, it's really, uh, this is the most educational site anywhere, explain what happened in Spanish, in English, and in Kekchi Maya. And uh, these are made by the famous Luis Fernando Luin, who is right here. And there's with our, one of our best men who's worked with us, Julio Lopez, for many years. Uh, helps us with security, and we've been through some pretty hairy stuff. But Huicho, Huicho, can I skip? Sonríe para la cámara. El famoso Luis Fernando Luin. No solamente, he's not just an artist that did these things, but he did the restoration here. He's become a brilliant restorer. Well, it's not done. We have to put the plaster on it um, yet. But um, this is a very important place. Now, there's another cistern that's also filled with skeletons, and then another one filled with skeletons of uh, the people killed. And now, in the palace, uh, where we're going right now, uh, in, in one corner of it, it's huge. Uh, it's one of the largest in the Maya world. But in the palace, um, we think we found another site of another mass killing. Uh, all of this would happen at the end of the site because this sacred water and the ones in the other cisterns, you put 30 bodies in that and you better be out of there the next day because it's, it's when, when, it, when a cow dies in the river, it falls in the river, five kilometers from here, it stinks forever. And of course the disease and the water's putrefied, so they killed this site. 
They knocked down the monuments. They knocked down, defaced the stela. They buried the entrances to the palace. And then they killed the nobility and the king and queen. And we noticed the king because he had a, a necklace saying, Kanmash, Holy Lord of Kangquen, Holy Lord of Machakila. He was a good king because he wore a necklace telling you exactly who the fuck he was. And this is my favorite kind of king. Yeah. Mm -hmm.